to Lockheed for leadership. The men and women of Lockheed Aircraft present Herbert Marshall in The Man Called X, produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. The Man Called X. He is the man who crosses the ocean as readily as you and I cross town. He is the man who travels today as you and I will travel tomorrow. He is the man who fights today's war in his unique fashion so that tomorrow's peace will make the world a neighborhood for all of us. He is the man called X. Tonight, Mr. X takes us to India, land of jeweled maharajas and beautiful princesses. But as the story opens, Mr. X is not yet within earshot of softly tinkling temple bells. For the moment, he's traveling down New York's Great White Way, and the lady sharing the cab with him is not an Indian princess, but Miss Nancy Bessington, anxious to arrive on time for the opening of a new musical comedy. Driver, I want you to drop us at the Gotham Towers, corner 45th Street. Okay. Oh, Tim, that's miles away from the theater. What, what are you up to? Donnie, I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone, to get rid of this Barney Oldfield and to deliver a letter. Letter? Are you by any chance working for the post office department? No, dear, but there's a department in Washington that'll be plenty interested in it. Washington? And you whisper that in my ear ten minutes before curtain time. Oh, I was going to tell you. Oh. Uh, but this fellow's driving, all I could think of was the police department. Twenty-fourth floor, penthouse elevator to your right, down the hall. Uh, just push the button, it's automatic. Come on, Nancy. Okay. Now, this whole affair won't take us three minutes, sweet. All I have to do is to deliver the letter to a certain Ama Pahalani. Who? Well, he's the representative of an East Indian Maharaja who's been here negotiating some deal or other. Well, what's in the letter, Ken? I think it's a contract. Oh. The boys didn't choose to tell me, and I didn't choose to ask, because I didn't want to be dragged into the matter. Here, let me push the button for the elevator. You'd better push it again. It's not, uh... Oh, here it comes. Oh. Stand aside, dear. The door's sliding open. Oh! Oh, there's someone in here. Someone was in there. Oh. This man's dead. Well, look. Look at, uh, Look at his turban, all covered with blood. Oh, don't touch him. Wait, his eyes are flickering open. He's trying to speak. Mr. Pahalani? Pahalani? Are you Ama Pahalani? He... He's trying to... He nodded. Mr. Pahalani, I'm Kenneth Thurston. I'm Mr. X. I bought your letter. A contract that must be delivered. His lips are moving. He's trying to say something. Yes, let, let, me, let me bend closer. Sorry. Can you whisper, Mr. Pahalani? Who is to get the letter? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Maharaja. Is that what you're saying? Maharaja. Jim, the buzzer. Yes, yeah, someone's pushed the button upstairs. Let's get out of here, quick. And stand away from the door. It's closing. Now to get downstairs fast, and then I want a taxi that can fly. Ken, how in the world can you think of going to the theater now? Theater? Honey, I'm going to India. Oh. Mr. Thurston, about to land, sir. Oh, wonderful city, isn't it, Stuart? Those golden roofs shining in the sun. All those graceful domes and spires. Gosh. Look out the other window, sir. See? There's the Maharaja's palace. Why, it's like a walled city in itself. Yes, sir. Look at that huge tower. I wonder what the palace looks like on the inside. Inside? I've often wondered too, sir. Well, I'll tell you all about it on my way back. You might find that rather difficult, sir. No foreigner has ever left that palace alive. Are you getting your bike, 
Hello, Mr. Thurston. Why, Aegon Velsmith, you're tracing me again. But I'm Zagon, Mr. Ed. Oh, Aegon, Zagon, either one. It's like being traced by the devil. Isn't it fantastic that we should meet here in India? Not as fantastic as your costume. A man with your physique parading around in a loincloth. Mr. X, I'm a yogi. Oh, a yogi, is it? A yogi of great powers. I know the language of animals. I can foretell the future. I can transport you magically to any distant spot. I Then can... you're just the man I want. Transport me to the Maharaja's palace. Oh, well, Mr. X, there are limits even to my power. You think your powers would increase if I gave you 50 rupees? Oh, yes. I already feel much stronger. For a hundred rupees, I'll take you to the Maharaja's prime minister. He will be very happy to arrange an interview with the Maharaja. How do you know he'll be happy to arrange it? Didn't I see I can see the future? And I can still see your past, so take your hand out of my pocket. I'm sorry. You're not going to steal that letter, say, go. Like you to see you, Mr. Thurston. Please have a seat. Thank you. I was... Permit me to finish. I am delighted to see you in my capacity as a private individual. But as the Maharaja's Prime Minister, I am pained to inform you that you will not be granted permission to stay. Suppose I tell you that I was sent by Amar Pahalani. And may I inquire who Amar Pahalani is? Was. He died in New York, murdered, while on a mission for the Maharaja, as you well know. But I do not know. At no time did His Highness the Maharaja send any emissary to the United States. Well, surely Washington wouldn't have received him as an accredited representative. I am as mystified as you are, Mr. Thurston. But, but look, at, look at this envelope. It contains certain papers which must be delivered to His Highness. I know of no papers, Mr. Thurston. Is it possible that you are the victim of a practical joke? Well, an Amar Pahalani must have had quite a sense of humor to let himself be murdered for a laugh. I agree with you. It's baffling. <laughs> Write me the solution when you get home, because you are taking the evening plane back to America. Mr. Prime Minister, I still request that you get me into the palace. You are asking the impossible. I won't attempt miracles. No, that would probably call for a, a yogi with magic powers. I was so in half cheap. May you grow rich. No, Mr. X, don't trust him. He's a charlatan. It's about time you showed up, Zagon. I almost couldn't come, Mr. X. You see, this is my hour for lying on a board studded with nails. I'm kind of on pins and needles myself. Now, did you arrange to get me into the palace? Wait. Let us stop in front of the snake charmer. Not too close to the snake, please. I pretend to be watching him while I whisper to him. Now listen carefully, Mr. X. Tonight I will take you to the palace. Zagon? How? When? I'm not even asking how much. The price is small, only a thousand rupees. Meet me at midnight by the babbling brook under the palace walls. Midnight, babbling brook. You shall get your thousand rupees. Thanks, Zagon. And I don't need to add, may you grow rich. Yes, they ring for the souls of those who entered this palace grounds and were never seen again. Mm, charming custom. Yes. Well, lead the way. Here, Mr. Epps. Uh, up the steps. There are guards about and a few tigers on the loose. Fine thing. These stairs seem endless. Yes, we are going up into the tower. Here is the balcony from which they throw down the bodies. 
The bodies of unexpected visitors, I suppose. Hmm? Yes. Now climb through after me. This is the window of the thousand jewels. Zagon, is it quicker to sneak into the Maharaja's room like this? Are you in? Jump down. This is not the Maharaja's room, Mr. X. Then where am I, Zagon? Look, I insist on seeing the Maharaja. Won't I do? Huh? Instead? Who are you? So fragile in your shimmering veils. I am the Princess Radhanita, the Maharaja's niece. And you are a guest in my chamber. It's an exquisite chamber. Too bad that I can't stay and admire the sights. Mr. X, maybe I did wrong to bring you into the Zenana, the women's quarter. Man to man, Zagon. I don't object at all. Thank you. The princess will undoubtedly lead me to the Maharaja. No, you must not see him. That is why I sent for you. My uncle is a cruel, evil man. He'll believe us. Sit outside on my doorstep. I obey, O oh princess. Goodbye, Mr. X. And may you grow happy and wise. Sit by me, Mr. X. On these cushions. Silken cushions. Fragrant with jasmine. Huh? I'm signaling my musicians. They will play so that our conversation may not be overheard. You will find basil nuts and sweetmeats on that golden tray. Reach for the wine. A jug of wine and thou. No, no, I better keep my head clear for the interview with the Maharaja. Why do you keep insisting on that? Must I warn you again and again of the danger? I love you for that, but why are you so concerned about a stranger like me? Because you are not a stranger. Press my hand like that again and I'll begin to agree with you. You're not a stranger. Because we knew someone in common. Ama Pahalani. Well, I'm glad to hear someone claim Pahalani for a friend. The Prime Minister denied that the man ever existed. Shh. The Prime Minister was not aware that Amar went to the United States. Apparently, the Prime Minister doesn't keep up with things. Very sloppy of him not to keep track of the Maharaja's emissaries. But he was not the Maharaja's emissary. I sent him to your country, Mr. X. You? To raise money. Much money. Oh, don't, don't tell me you're broke, Princess. My, your, your lovely arms are... Uh, they glisten with emeralds and rubies. It takes limitless money to overthrow the Maharaja. Am I to understand that you and the late Mr. Pahalani had serious thoughts of uh, deposing the Maharaja? Yes, and to kill him, just as he killed my father, with his own hands to gain the throne. Oh, and those stories about the Maharaja's cruelty aren't just uh, publicity. So may the truth will be told that my father didn't die of malaria. Malaria is quite a nuisance around here, isn't it? wonder if I'm allergic. I would a thousand times rather have you die of malaria than be strangled by the Maharaja. You are concerned, Princess. And you obviously don't want me to deliver the letter to His Highness, in spite of Pahalani's dying request. Perhaps you misunderstood him. Perhaps he said Rananika, not Maharaja. Perhaps. His English was far from perfect. Whereas your lips speak a universal language. So give me the letter. You will not find me ungrateful. Ah, paradise, you know. Oh. No, don't kiss me again. First, the letter. Radhanika, why change the subject? Because I must get that letter before the Maharaja arrives. Let him arrive. I welcome his arrival. Your kisses have made me as bold as a lion. Keep your voice down. Are you deliberately trying to get him to come in here? Yes, deliberately and cold bloodedly. Do you think I've just, I'll just hand you that letter and leave like a cab, letting you face danger alone? You sound so wild. Yes, I'm in a fever of indignation. Fever. Fever. Oh, oh, Adonika, feel my, feel my, feel my head. Am I kicking up a temperature? Give me the letter. I'm ill. Give me the letter and go. Go. In my condition, my, my knees are giving way. Let me just, uh, let me just lie here on the couch. No, no, you mustn't lie down. Mr. X, sit up. Malaria. Can it be malaria? No, no. Why, my, my teeth are chattering. Please, please, I got the please, shakes. No. Oh. Oh. oh, Yogi, Yogi, hmm? come in here. 
You are certain at your disposal, Princess. The director is either play hacking or he is ill with malaria. I can cure sickness of the soul, but for the body, I would need quinine. You mustn't mention uh, quinine. Only the court physician has that, and he would betray us. I'm chilled. Cover me. Yes, yes cover him. Well, here, Mr. Uh-huh. Rex, I'm putting rocks on you. All right. <laughs> no. Yogi, we've got to get him out of here. But first, you must help me search him for that letter. Stay gone, is that you? Yes. Put blankets on me. Why? More. More. Cover me with your jacket. But, Mr. Rex, if I give you my jacket, then I will freeze in this loin coat. Oh, put your jacket on him, Yogi. Anything to keep him quiet while we search him. Oh, well, here is my coat, Mr. Oh, feel warmer now? Put on the light, Yogi. No one must know that I'm still awake. But, Princess, I always find it difficult to pick pockets in the dark. The gong! Oh. Yogi, that's a signal. The Maharaja has left his chambers. Heaven help us if he enters this tower! I'll blow out the light in a minute if I can ever catch my breath. Now we must wait here in the dark, Yogi. The gong was so nearer and nearer. Oh, I can foretell the future, and it's not very promising. I'm sorry he ever came here. I'm afraid. Ah, my beloved. Fill the cup that clears today of past regrets and future fears. Poetry. He Uh, is delirious. Such a... This can mean death. Dust unto dust and under dust you lie. Song wine, song song, song singer, and song then... Just a moment, we will continue with the second act of tonight's exploit to the man called X, starring Mr. Herbert Marshall. But first, a word from the men and women of Lockheed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lockheed Constellation is the largest, fastest, highest flying land transport in use today. Certainly, this is an interesting statement. Yet again tonight, we of Lockheed wish to point out what these points of superiority, largest, fastest, highest flying, mean to you, the airline passenger. Now, the ability to carry heavy loads for great distances at high speed is a direct result of power and design. And these factors, power and design, built into the Lockheed Constellation, provide such things as safety and comfort and economy. The Constellation can fly high over the highest mountain ranges and high above storms and disturbing air currents. It can land and take off from any standard airport. And, this is important, it can maintain altitude and even climb on any two of its four powerful engines. Furthermore, on flights of as short as 100 miles, the Lockheed Constellation has been found to operate more efficiently and more economically than the ordinary two-engine transport you fly in today. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, safety-wise and comfort-wise and economy-wise, the Lockheed Constellation is setting brand new standards in air transportation. Today, it serves the Army Air Forces. Tomorrow, it will serve you, bringing the airport in your town closer and ever closer to other cities and towns in America and to lands beyond the horizon. So again, we say, remember the name, the Lockheed Constellation. Another example of Lockheed leadership. We return to tonight's exploit to the man called X, starring Herbert Marshall, to find him in the scented boudoir of an Indian princess. He had come to this mysterious principality of India to deliver a letter to the ruling Maharaja, But now Mr. X is suffering from an attack of malaria, and the princess is trying to steal the letter from his pocket while gongs announce the approach of the Maharaja. Yogi, the gongs sound in the tower now. The Maharaja is coming up the stairs. Princess, I've looked through all the pockets of Mr. X. I can't find the letter. Wait, I will draw aside the curtains. Let the moon shine in. Yon rising moon looks for us again. 
How oft hereafter will she wax and wane? Oh, no letter. I am ready to give up oh. and magically transport myself a safe distance from here. Wait, Yogi, before oh. you leave. I must give you a note to take to the Prime Minister. I will write it here in the moonlight. Wait. Well, Mr. X's pockets are so convenient, I might as well collect my small fee of a thousand rupees. Ah, take the cash and let the credit go. Nor heed the rumble of the distant drum. Here is the note. The Prime Minister will know what to do when he gets it. Before I go, I must get back the jacket that I put on Mr. X. This loincloth looks too informal. Here. Now. Have you got your jacket on? Yes. Then go. Behind that tapestry, you will find a secret door. What? Hmm. A dark passage. Hmm. What is the strange smell? It's suffocating. You will get used to the smell. Goodbye, uh, okay, goodbye. Uh, 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 now uh, I'm alone with this babbling uh, idiot. What am I to do with him? Ah, uh, make the most of time we may yet spend before we two into the dust descend. Open the door. Rodonico! Yes, yes, Your Highness. I'm opening it. I heard voices in here. Chamberlain, bring your light. Here is the lamp, Your Highness. Hold it higher. Ah, uh -huh. a man. An intruder, Uncle. I struggled. I fought him. Yes, fought him with sweetmeats and betel nuts. Fought me with soft blandishments to right. keep me from disturbing your highness's slumber. Nonsense. She knows very well that I have insomnia. Right, sir. Who are you? I'm the man called X, an amateur letter carrier. I Don't beg you. Listen to him. He has no letter. Of course he hasn't, Vodanika. I was not born yesterday. Highness, does the name Amar Pahalani mean anything to you? Huh? Yes. Yes, it means a million rupees. It means a missing contract for the sale of 10,000 pounds of chinkona bark. Then the deal involves ch chinkona bark, precious chinkona from which quinine is made. Yes, tell me, have you really got Amar's letter? He hasn't, he hasn't. Have him shot. In good time, Radonika. Mr. X, do not try my patience. I'm forced to your highness. The letter, owing to interference with the mail, is not on me. What? Lost? Not if we hurry. Where to? To the always hospitable home of His Excellency, the Prime Minister. That's where the letter is. It's a lie. Don't go with him. Don't. I seldom lie, Princess. Though occasionally I exaggerate things like malaria symptoms. Why don't you, um, slip something over your, uh, your shimmering veils and come along with us? Do so, Radonika. Then, if the fellow is a liar, Uncle will let you shoot him with Uncle's own gun. No, 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 I can't. I won't go. It's time to escape through the window. Window of a thousand, Joe. I've caught her. Up and down. Let me go. No, no. princess. No. I will not go. I'm carrying you to yon jasmine-scented cushion. Hurry, no, Mr. X. No. The Prime Minister retires early. I hope you'll retire permanently. Come here, Your Highness. Just let me cover Radonika with a rug. When I tore a chunk out of her shimmering veil. There. Your Highness. Servant, where is your worthy master, that scoundrel? Why, His Excellency is... He's out. Out? Hmm. Now, what excuse will you find, Mr. X? The letter is coming by carrier pigeon. And that means you, Zagon, get out from under that table. Mr. X, this is my hour for making myself invisible. Stand up like a man and pick your pocket. My own pocket? It's highly unprofessional. Then I'll have to do it for you, Zagon. Oh, no, please. Oh, stop squirming, Nona. <laughs> well, I have to look in your other pocket. <laughs> Don't act so kittenish. I'm ticklish. Ah, here it is. Your Highness, I have the honor of handing you the letter. Amar Pahalani's letter, sealed with his own ring. Now let me open it. I had a fortune in my pocket and I didn't know it. What kind of a yogi am I? As one miracle man to another, Zagor, I switched the letter from my pocket to yours when you covered me with your jacket. Yes, yes, the contract is in order. Look, sealed, signed, and delivered finally. And so will the Chincona bark be delivered to my country with most quinine in the hands of the Japs this will be vital to our men in the Pacific. What? Mr. Rex, an explosion. Yes, look out the window. Flames. 
The Chincona warehouses. Burning. Blown up. Let's hurry there. Oh, dear. Let's go run into that visiting fireman, the prime minister. Everything is getting clearer and clearer. Clearer with those clouds of smoke. Dagon, where there's smoke, there's fire. Highness, the calamity, the warehouse is in ashes. The Prime Minister is directing the rescue, Your Highness. Versatile fellow. Burns the candle at both ends. You, you man, send the Prime Minister here. He's already coming. A diplomat on a fire helmet. Highness, Mr. X, my friends, you must dry your tears. This tragedy was written in the Book of Fate. Are you sure it wasn't written in the note which the Princess sent you? It was, Mr. X. I picked the note a little. Uh, Maharaja Saab, do not listen to the yogi. He's probably in a trance. What mortal man can tell why and how Chincona bark burns? My nose can tell. And it's not Chincona that's burning. This smoke doesn't smell of quinine. Your Highness, you trust the nose of this foreigner against no, the word? No, uh, the Prime Minister. These warehouses were empty, systematically looted by you and the Princess. And the bark stored elsewhere for eventual sale to Japan. Your Highness, I can explain... Explain the murder of Amapahalani Pahalani by your spies. Explain in your next existence. I shoot you like a dog. May you grow dead. Maybe I killed him too impulsively. Now I shall never discover where the chincona is stored. Visit the lovely Radonika. Ask her to draw aside a priceless tapestry. Open a hidden door to a secret passage. But don't suffocate, Your Highness. I nearly choked to death. Yogi breath control notwithstanding. Yes, the chincona bark smelled to high heavens, Dagon. But not worse than Radonika's silken cushions. Confidentially, I hate the smell of jasmine. The cushions will be buried in the same grave with Radonika. Poor Radonika. I hope your highness will give her a state burial. Uh, it's most unlikely that I shall meet her in another existence. Yon rising moon that looks for us again. How oft hereafter will she wax and wane? How oft hereafter, rising look for us through that same garden and for one in vain. Before our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall returns to tell you about next week's exploit of the man called X. Here is an announcement from Lockheed. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow, Sunday, October 1st, marks another important milestone in the history of air transportation. Tomorrow, a Lockheed Lodestar, flying the colors of national airlines, takes off from the Jacksonville, Florida airport and flies the first national airline schedule to New York City. Other Lockheed Lodestars will follow on regular schedules to establish the fastest airline service up and down the Atlantic seaboard. Lockheed congratulates National Airlines on the inauguration of this new service, a progressive step that is typical of many other United States airlines. Most of them started small, and with the support of air-minded Americans, extended and expanded, until today our nation is a vast network of integrated air systems. Yes, the nation's airlines have established a progress record unmatched by any other American industry. And this is only the beginning. Tomorrow, after victory, New planes and new routes will make the entire world part of the airline network, a system that you and every American can enjoy. And now a word from our star, Herbert Marshall. Next week you'll find me high among the peaks of the eternal Alps in Switzerland, where a simple toy music box leads to adventure, romance, and even danger. For there's a beautiful blonde involved who also proves to be a beautiful shot with a high-powered rifle. So join us, won't you, when next I return, as the man called it. The man called X is presented by the men and women of Lockheed Aircraft. Tonight's exploit was written by Francis Farrago. 
Original music was composed and conducted by Felix Mills. The entire production was under the direction of Jack Johnstone. Mr. Marshall's appearance is through courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture Kismet. The men and women of Lockheed invite you to join Mr. X again next Saturday. Same time, same station. John McIntyre speaking. This is the Blue Network.